Oh my god. I almost dropped it there for a second. Well, you're listening to his carcass. Dear viewer, it is an historic, an historic thing. One of my favorite metal bands, and one of every metal person, what should be every metal person's favorite metal bands, one of at least, uh, the esteemed English, I should say super death metal uh, act, super death metal. <laughs> like Napalm Death or Super Death Metal. The Napalm Death apparently are number seven in uh, the world, death metal wise. I feel uh, there's a lot of foot traffic going by, so just give me a moment, let me close my window. Because we're sub basement, there's people walking by the whole time. Alright, so very quickly, the reason I want to do this, I want to talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Azza wa Jal, God, the invisible, so called quote unquote invisible man in the sky, the the, the pink teapot uh, being, right? The spaghetti monster being. There's no reason to believe in a spaghetti monster, there's a thing. There's no reason to believe there's a pink teapot flying around Mars. Douglas Adams, a guy I bow down to, all right? Uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, right? Uh, the long, dark tea time of the soul. The restaurant at the end of the universe. So long and thanks for all the fish. The, the meaning of life is, is 42. <laughs> The Saturn fans will understand where I'm, where I'm coming from and where I'm going, hopefully, with, with, with the following statements. Douglas Adams says, great artwork, by the way. They were uh, basically known for their very, very graphic, uh, kind of surgical, uh, you know, surgical related uh, imagery and uh, uh, lyrics, lyrics. and. The lyrics, the carcass, carcass lyrics, and I'm about to read you some carcass lyrics talking about jihad. And they're actually talking, they're lecturing, it's amazing, I can't believe it, it blew my mind, it blew my, it turned my hair blonde, or it's turning my hair a different color, or something like that. Um, obviously that's not the case, and obviously I'm showing off my beautiful golden mane. <laughs> and, uh, you know, this stuff is great, and I was saying something earlier, which I forget, um, Douglas Adams, right, so... He said something that Richard Dawkins likes quoting. Richard Dawkins is like, well, you know, uh, Douglas Adams said, because Richard Dawkins hasn't come up with anything original himself in, 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 in a long time, or if ever, right? Apart from memes. Memes is a very nice concept, and I'll give him a lot of credit and kudos for that, although I, I don't understand how a man of his intelligence, not that I'm saying anything bad about him, which I am actually, unfortunately, you know, like, I try not to say bad things about people, because they're six, the Imam, peace be upon him, he said, don't say bad things about people, just don't do it. Just don't do it. That's what he said. You know, on the other hand, if someone is an inveterate, inveterate, I-N-V-E-T-E-R-A-T-E, -E -E, something like that, sinner, like an openly bad person who flouts their badness, right, publicly, you're allowed to, in fact, perhaps even exhorted to talk about those kinds of people. The guy's a drunkard, he's a gambler, he's... He's levicious. <laughs> Another nice word, right? The carcass lyrics I want to get to, but Douglas Adams is like, isn't it enough to enjoy the garden without, without believing that there are fairies at the bottom of it? He's actually... I mean, it's a very interesting statement. He's onto something, he's not onto something, and he kind of got sidetracked. He's onto something, in as much as you know what, my neighbor who believes, who's, who believes in karma but doesn't believe in an invisible man, he believes in an invisible force, he doesn't believe in an invisible man, I say we believe in the same thing, brother. That's basically what that is. Um, basically with the, with the garden, my, my neighbor said, well, don't you, isn't it, you should just do good for the sake of good. That's a really great point. There's a, there's a fine Islamic mystical saying it says, on day one, I left the world, as in, I put the world, I, I abstained from the world. The world became zero in my eyes, nothing. And that's actually the starting point of, of being spiritual. Detach yourself from all outcomes, and all fear, and all want. And this is not just Islamic, it's Buddhism. Uh, desire is the root of all suffering, right? So, um, coming back to this, don't worry, if there are any Carcass fans wondering what I have to say about it, why would you wonder? You'd be listening to it and listening to some of the earlier stuff and reading the lyrics, man, they're amazing. I mean, it's like the guy Jeff Walker sits down with, uh, 
uh, with a dictionary or something, a medical dictionary or some damn thing. It's not even a medical dictionary anymore. His just his vocabulary is just out there. I mean, he uses words that you can't even imagine exist in the in the in the language, in such a fine fashion, and they rhyme, excorpulate and corpusculate and this and not not. I'll read some of this stuff to you, and you you'll understand where I'm coming from. And then in the early days, one of their dads was a veterinarian, a, veter a veterinarian, a animal doctor, um, and. Uh, they used to go into his lab and just, you know, he'd be cutting stuff up and they'd be taking pictures of all this nasty stuff and, and basically he's pasting it together and it became celebrated artwork and they were like legal problems and censorship and guys getting in trouble and they're waiting for the cops, the thought police to show up and lock them up and all this kind of stuff. This is like, I mean, these guys have been around for, this is this album, I don't know if I mentioned it, the last album was out in 1996, it's been almost 20 years. Kirk Hammett from Metallica is on YouTube talking about how amazing it is that Carcass has put out a new album, and the album kicks ass, man. These guys are in their way into their 40s right now, and uh, their stuff is just unbelievable. And it's very fast, it's very technical, it's very good, and then the lyrics, uh, you know, the lyrics are something else. Uh, their, their, uh, their single is called Unfit for Human Consumption. <laughs> there's a, there's a, there's a, a you know, I'm laughing because it's their single, but you should see the video for it. There's a video for it, and the thing is just intense, man. He's standing there singing, and throughout the course of the... And there's all this medical stuff going on, obviously, a guy getting cut up on a table or a cadaver or some, some very morbid stuff, which is not even PG. It's not R-rated or anything like that, but it's just very morbid. And, and his flesh is beginning to deteriorate, and there's spots forming throughout... As the song progresses, it's like he, he's, he's decaying, essentially. Um, I guess that's what they had in mind. God, I've been looking for... You know what I need is a stand for this damn thing, right? And, you know, I, I need to try and make sure because I've had videos where my head goes up and down out of the frame and, you know what, I, I think... I, I, uh, you know, I uh, fancy myself uh, a bit of a, a film critic, uh, it, as it were. Um, I'm a writer. Uh, I have like so many reviews out there. People used to read my movie reviews and like that stuff. I love watching commentaries. I watch. Com I would rather watch a commentary than the movie itself. Uh, in some cases, I guess. I mean, it's very. It's a hard thing. Um, but the best, obviously, is to watch the movie and then the commentary. I mean, when you watch the commentary after watching a movie, it's like watching the movie again on a whole different level. And that's that's basically the thing with Islam and religion. People think it's this and it's that and it's this. And but when you get into it. Basically, for us Shias, it's the family of Prophet Muhammad. And all you'll find are the epitome of human virtue. Uh, stories of, that, that showcase the epitome of human virtue. And not just stories. This is the thing. They're extant words that exist today that you can read. Imam Ali's speeches. They'll blow your damn mind. He talks about the Big Bang and speech number one in his book, The Peak of Eloquence, Nahj al -Balagha. The Lady Fatima giving speeches, the prayers of her fourth Imam, peace be upon him, and then the first uh, self-help book in the world, I figure. It's called The Lantern of the Path, Go Look It Up, by Imam Sadiq, peace be upon him. 99 chapters, one page each, and they've got things like, you know, uh, honesty, sincerity, uh, you know, no, truthfulness, sincerity, and obviously things like fear of God, servitude. The first two chapters are called bondmanship. <laughs> when you read it, you'll be like, what is this, James Bondmanship? No, it's like servitude. And he says something so amazing that, oh my God, like, this is the thing that you guys don't understand. Servitude or servanthood or being a servant is, 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 is let's say, it's a, it's a gem or something. The, the, the core of which is lordship. You know, I'm trying to translate it, the concept or the Arabic or something. I'm trying to translate it. Basically, being a servant, the, the, the essence of being a servant turns you into a god in a sense. What I'm trying to say is the essence of, of being a servant is, is godness or lordness or you know what I mean? Like, god. It's hard to, to even you find a word in English. Uh, lordship, essentially. What, what, it, what I'm trying to say or what it, what it means, what it, re, what it relates to it is, is the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says that, Ya, ya Abdi, Abudi or Atini, Atini, Tajaluka Mithli, something like that. My servant, worship me or obey me and I'll make you like me, right? So anyway, you know, this, this thing with the, the, the camera is really bothering me and I don't even know if I'm still filming and Douglas Adams and all this kind of stuff. 10-10, we're at 10-10 right now. So Douglas Adams, 
Here's the thing. If you go to a nice uh, thingy, like I'm hitting up Toronto Zoo nowadays. Uh, nowadays, meaning yesterday, I read this article in, in, the, in the Metro newspaper. And it talks about how the zoo is losing customers to people like Ripley's and blah, 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 blah. Or rather, they're, bla they're making, they have excusitis, uh, uh, inflammation of the excusitis gland. Oh, uh, we had 300,000 less people last year because we lost our elephants and they had to go to California. And the pandas got here late and now nobody's interested in them. Stupid nonsense like that. And Ripley's, believe it or not, guy, obviously, amazing stuff. Hey, don't get me wrong. You're coming into downtown on the Gartner Expressway. And you see these huge billboards with sharks and all this kind of stuff. Well, the shark stuff, I think that's aquarium. But there's Ripley's stuff going on and everyone's interested in it and people are going there. And they're like, oh, they're taking our foot traffic away. And I'm like, guys, it's not about pandas, it's about positioning. I called them up and I said, who can I talk to about this? And they put me through there, their marketing communications director, lady by the name of Jennifer Tracy. I left her message, told her, email her. And I'm like, listen, what you gotta be saying is, if you want a sci-fi horror show, you go to Ripley's. If you want blah, 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 you go to Water. Hey, if you want animals and nature and wildlife and recreating the, the ambience of an African safari, you come to the fucking zoo. It's a different concept. You don't need... See, it's not, it's like people are looking for that magic thing that's going to that blow the doors open and people are going to come flying through. A congealed clot of blood is the name of the song, okay? And this is, this is, these are the lyrics to this song. So Douglas Adams, okay, so you go to the zoo, it is, actually, it's not enough to go through the zoo. Like, you can go through the zoo, so you go through his garden and, and you don't have to believe in fairies at the bottom of it, but aren't you going to think and wouldn't any even, chi wouldn't a child even think? Whose garden is this? Wow, this is so beautiful. It's so beautifully arranged. Look at these flowers. Look at these trellises. Look at these colors. Orchards. What kind of plants are these? I've never seen this shit before. Somebody's obviously put a lot of thought into this stuff, right? You understand? So he, came, he started something. Like, so being good. So the first day I left the world, the second day I left the hereafter, says the mystic, the third day I left everything except God. You shouldn't. He's my neighbor's absolutely right. And so is Douglas Adams in a way. You shouldn't do good for a reward. You shouldn't do good for heaven or hell even. Imam Ali said there's people who, who do good or obey Allah because they fear his punishment. But that's the worship of slaves. Then he says there's people who do good because they are desirous of his reward and ultimately his heaven. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. But that is the worship of a trader, a businessman. But then there are those who worship who because they have... They have found God worthy of worship. Do you understand where we're going with this? And Imam Sadiq said the same thing, peace be upon him. The sixth Imam, great, great, great grandson of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family. And he said instead of those who found God worthy, they love God. There are those who worship him because they love him. They love him. They love to worship him. And those people, that is the, uh, the prayer and the worship of free people. Now, you go into your garden, you can just... Enjoy how great it is. But ultimately, as a rational person, you're going to say, who put this stuff together? You're not going to say fairies. You're not going to go to uh, the zoo and you're going to be like, oh, they probably have an exhibit with, with some space alien somewhere and they keep it secret and all this rubbish. There's no reason to start thinking along those lines. It, although you can't deny the possibility. You understand. There may be a pink teapot around Mars nobody's seen. Although then the question comes up, who created that teapot? And who put it out there? How did it end up over there? Yeah, Douglas Adams, all this kind of stuff. So a congealed clot of blood. You know what? I'm out of I'm out of, of time, but you know what? He basically calls he says things like the Jal, soldier of unholy warfare, the prophet of rage, the jihadist black uh, flag. But the prophet is P R O F I T because he actually props Prophet Muhammad in this. He basically says, guys, I'm out of time. I try to keep these things under fifteen minutes, and I don't even know what the the name of this one's going to be. Um, I just don't know. I just go off on these rants, right? You should have seen me at the mall yesterday and, and on the, uh, the transit system. Wow, what a time I had. It was like ruckus on the streetcar. I started going on about how unfriendly Torontonians are. And this lady was like, will you stop? And it's like, she's like 22 or something. I've had enough of listening to you talk about how unfriendly Torontonians are. And I was like, you just prove it to me. And then some other lady behind me, some black lady was like, you, you're lucky you're still standing. And I'm like, what? Is it